Hey Prime Timers, welcome back. It's Dominic the Prime Time Treasure Hunter. Thanks for coming by to check out another video. I want to do an update for you on an item that I purchased when I went picking in Pennsylvania. I'm going to link to that video at the end. You may remember one of the items that I picked during my weekend road trip with my son for a basketball tournament. I was trying to show in the video how you could still make money when you're out on these weekend trips if you could just fit in a little sourcing here or there. And so we went to a few garage sales and uh, one of them I found this item laying down. Do you remember this? This is Jackie O and it's a giant paper doll set. I mean, this thing is absolutely huge. Now, the thing is, we've got to find a way to ship this if it sells. And that's got to be something that's going through a lot of people's minds when they're looking at it and thinking about it for potential resale. And problems that people would think of with regards to shipping this is one reason why I think that this was still sitting there when I got there because the gentleman who wound up selling this to me told me that not only had it been sitting out for a couple of garage sales that he had, but it also sat out all last year as well and no one picked it up. And you know, a couple things about this that to me when I saw it just jumped out at me was one, first of all, it's Jackie O. So Jackie Onassis, JFK's wife, I mean, she is part of Camelot and she is just revered in American culture. And you know, she is a beautiful uh, woman, a beautiful first lady and uh, this nice bright color and this evening gown on her, I mean, it just really, really just stood out to me. The other thing is the size of it. I mean, just being so big, that's just not something you typically see. Original boxes are awesome. A lot of times when you find paper dolls, they're not in the original boxes anymore. So I'm gonna open this up if you didn't get to see that video. And even if you did, I'll just refresh your memory. If you look inside here, I mean, this is this is a display stand that she, uh, you know, helps kind of balance her out there. But if you look, if you look at this, this has every single part in it except one thing, which is kind of an important part, but it's missing. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But it has the full body, and also it has all of the clothes that would go on her, and they're still on the original sheets. So there's nothing there that's missing. And if you, you know, basically peel these up, you're gonna keep seeing more and more sheets. So it just keeps going, going, going. Now, the one thing that it's missing has to do with the uh, uh, company name here. Uh, it says Magic Wand, as you could see right there. And the reason it was called Magic Wand is that you would take the piece of clothing off and you would put it on the paper doll and then it would basically stick to the paper doll. But um, thing about the magic wand, I mean, it's good to have as a, as a collectible piece and it certainly makes it more valuable, but the uh, magic wand power um, actually would just kind of go away over age. It would just kind of age out. And really you could still stick the clothing on there just by rubbing your hand over it and just, uh, um, kind of applying it that way. So it's not like you can't still put the clothes on it if you if you wanted to. Although I suspect most people purchasing at this, uh, this at this point are really gonna wanna keep it for display and collectible value. And they're not gonna wanna peel the clothes off anyway. So this piece does have the uh, wand missing, which could be another reason why it sat. But again, you have to remember that most people buying this are probably not buying it to use it. And so having it for its display value is something also very important that a collector would want. So I purchased it for $20. He originally uh, wanted 25. So I was able to get the the, the 20, get it knocked down five bucks just because I've been sitting out for so long and no one was buying it from the guy, which to, again, to me, inexplicable. Uh, today, this sold for $115. So uh, I knew it was gonna sell, it's just a matter of time. It's one of these items, sometimes you have to long tail kind of wait for the right person to come along. Uh, but you know what? That is a good sale. So the question is now, where do you find a box? That's the number one question, especially people who are new have when they look at items like this, is they think 
there's not boxes like this around. Where am I gonna find something like this? So let's go into uh, another room, another area of Primetime Treasure Headquarters where we have some more space, and I'm gonna show you a very, very simple solution to shipping out these long, lightweight, oblong kind of items. This is not a heavy item. The, the problem with it that presents a barrier to a lot of people is purely the length of it. So let's head on to the other room. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna tackle this and knock this out. Okay, so here you can see that the entire length of the box is about 31 inches. Uh, definitely not a size that you're gonna run into uh, every day. So like I said, you have to be a little creative. Before we do anything with our boxing solution, what we want to make sure we do is put a nice thin layer of bubble wrap around her because, you know, Jackie O is delicate and uh, she is a prized collectible and someone paid a lot of money for her. We definitely do not want this box to get damaged, so we have to balance out making sure that the package is protected properly while also making sure that we don't overdo it in terms of weight and size so we don't get killed on the shipping. So let's go put the bubble wrap around her and then I'll show you what the next steps are. Okay, you can see here that the bubble wrap is now secured onto the box and what we need to do now is we have to do some cardboard application to both sides so she essentially becomes protected with a sandwiching technique that I have shown with many other types of items and we're gonna apply it here as well. I'm gonna show you what I mean if you haven't seen this technique before. Now, what I have here on the outside is a big box. Now, we are not going to ship her in this box, but I'm just showing you this box as an example that there are these bigger boxes out there that you could get that have a length that well exceeds 31 inches that you could use as a base to cut cardboard strips out of. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna cut these flaps off over here and I'm gonna cut uh, this one off here as well. And we're gonna use that as the top and the bottom layer of the cardboard sandwich that I'm gonna show you. The reason why we are not gonna ship her in this big box right here is it would just be overkill, it would be too much. She doesn't need that type of uh, size box. That would just cost way, way too much to ship. We wanna make sure the dimensions are as little as possible while still being able to provide her the proper protection that she needs so that she doesn't get damaged. But again, we also wanna make sure that we reduce shipping costs on items that are this big. Now, if you're wondering where I got this big box, uh, I just actually pulled this off the top of a dumpster. Now, I don't do dumpster diving, if you're wondering about that. That's why you don't see anything like that on my channel. But what I will do once in a while is go in the back of department stores and I will uh, look on the very top and I'll see if there's any kind of you know recent big cardboard pieces like this that were uh, thrown out. And I'll pick them up to use them for a task like this. Now, you don't have to go to a dumpster if you're not comfortable with that. I honestly don't go to them that often. But what I have done and shown in other videos which you could use for this uh, same type of project as well. If I didn't have this box, just go and get those cardboard slip sheets. They're basically big pieces of cardboard that kind of look like uh, this size, but they're a little bit bigger. And they basically are used in uh, places like Costco and Sam's Club, um, BJ's Wholesale, those kind of places. They are basically uh, put between the pallets. They're big cardboard pieces that are kept between the pallets. And they... Um, they basically uh, protect the pallets from uh, damaging uh, the goods on the ones below it. So uh, you could get those as well. Either way, just make sure you go out, you get just some big cardboard pieces for projects like this. Keep them on hand. I'm going to show you how we're going to do this sandwiching technique right now. Okay, so I cut the cardboard strips off of each side of the box. And you could see one of them is right underneath her like this. It is cut pretty close to size, but you have to leave some margin because if you cut it flush to the box, 
then the edges of the box are gonna get crushed during transport, so you don't want that. Leave about a half an inch to an inch all the way around, like you could see here, you've got to leave some margin. Even up top here, that's what it should look like. So when you, now there is margin here as well, it just might be hard to see with the light, but there's margin there too. So same thing with the top piece. The top piece is just gonna run parallel to the one below it. And what we're gonna do is just make it nice and even here. And I'm just gonna take some tape and I'm gonna tape the edges around, just some three and a half inch uh, packing tape, go all the way around, and that will provide an added barrier right around here. So during transport, if anything pushes up against it, that will naturally push back with the tape. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. I'm gonna tape it up and then I'll turn it back on. Okay, so as you can see, I just used a systematic technique of taping her all the way around. You don't literally have to cover every single gap, although you can if you want to, but I found that it's not uh, really necessary. It just depends on how uh, obsessive compulsive you want to be with it. But, uh, you know, a couple tips on the cardboard. You want to make sure that you're using cardboard that is strong. You obviously don't want to use cardboard that's very flimsy or it's really not going to have much of, uh, much of an impact. So... Uh, make sure you're using stronger cardboard. Also, uh, sometimes what you could do with this is you could uh, basically pull the flaps up towards one another so they're almost touching, and that will also uh, provide it some additional protection. So basically what we did is we created our own box. Now, if you're brand new, you might be wondering, uh, okay, so what are you gonna do? Put a shipping label on that and just send it out? No, this is where our 24 by 24 inch poly bags come in super, super helpful. I'm gonna show you what I mean in just a second. Okay, so this is a 24 by 24 inch poly bag. I have sung the praises of these in so many other videos and shown you how much these can save you money with so many different applications. This is just another example of it. But being 24 by 24 inches, it's obviously gonna be too small for a 31 inch sized item. So what we wanna do is we are going to still use it, but we are going to put the bag on one side of the uh, box like this, and then we'll just pull this over like this and we'll just do some taping and we'll make it look nice. And uh, once that's done, we'll just take the other bag and we'll bring it over here and we're just gonna tape this side up like this. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Okay, so here is the finished product. As you can see, the two 24 by 24 inch poly bag mailers are taped nice and firmly right against this box. So it's nice and snug and ready to go. I did check the shipping rates for this. Now, what I always tell you for either big, heavy items or you know long or wide items, anything that looks like it's gonna be an oversized or really heavy package, to always make sure when you put your listing up that you make sure you check economy shipping one to 10 days without selecting a specific carrier because this allows you to choose between priority mail, parcel post through USPS, or you could try FedEx ground or FedEx home delivery. Any one of those are on the table and on any given day depending on where you're shipping from and where you're shipping to and how big the item is and how much it weighs any one of those could wind up being the best option for you price wise it turns out if i went to ship this fedex this would have cost me over 20 dollars to do it that way whether it was fedex home delivery or fedex smart post but by going priority mail this only cost me $9.73, and it also comes with $100 of insurance. Not bad for a $115 sale. So if I would have went parcel post, that actually would have been more money. That would have cost $9.83, and it would have taken longer to get there. So Priority Mail was the no-brainer solution on this. How many of you are shocked that this item went out at less than 
ten dollars. Okay, it's thirty-three inches long. When once you factor in the cardboard, uh, it's like fourteen inches wide, two inches thick, and it weighed three pounds and four ounces, going from New York to Missouri. So I am thrilled. You know, a lot of people I think kept this item sitting there because they thought that this was going to be something that would cost 50 bucks to ship. It doesn't have to be that way. This is a very, very simple, easy solution of just putting some light bubble wrap around it, sandwiching it with some nice, strong cardboard, and then putting those 24 by 24 inch poly bag mallets around it. It's nice and secure. It is not going to get damaged. I do this all the time. So trust me, this works. Try it out yourself. Let me know down below in the comments if you use this technique, how you found it, that type of thing. So with that, I'm going to sign off. And if you like the video, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure, as I always say, come to the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. We just raised one thousand five hundred dollars approximately in one day for one seller to support the american cancer society so i'm very proud of that we're doing a lot of big things in the group we've got a big interview with jason t smith who was just on pawn stars tonight and he also starred in a reality tv show about thrifting so that's wednesday night at 9 p.m eastern standard time so don't miss that Make sure you follow me on Instagram. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. All these links are down below in the description section. In addition to the links for the 24 by 24 inch poly bags that made this largely possible. So those are affiliate links. I do get a little bit of commission off of those. It helps support the channel. So pick them up. You will be very, very happy that you did so. I'll see you at the next video, everyone. Take care.